tutorial we will learn how to calculate stresses and deflections of a beam. Uh, this problem has been taken from verification manual 2 of ANSYS help documentation. The reference of this problem is from Timo Shenko's book of strength of material part 1 elementary theory and problem page 99 problem number 3. Okay, the problem is something like this. An I beam, 30 inches wide flange I beam, is simply supported and uniformly distributed loads are applied on its two overhanging portions. Okay, the dimensions are A equals 10 feet, L equals 20 feet, this H equals 30 inches, W is 10,000 pounds per feet. Okay. What we'll do is we'll make an equivalent finite element model for this uh, for this model and solve it using ANSYS. Now this our equivalent finite element model would resemble something like this. That is, we'll make five nodes: one at uh, one at the left hand corner, one at the right hand corner, one at the middle of the beam, and two nodes at the position of location of the simple supports. Now in this analysis, we will be using beam 3 element. So let's see what this beam 3 is all about. Okay, This beam 3 element is a uniaxial element that is its axis is x axis connected from nodes i and j. It's a uniaxial two dimensional and it has three degrees of freedom that is this beam can only move in a plane. So note i can move along the x-axis, along y-axis or rotate about the z-axis. ux, ui, rod z for i and similarly ux, ui, rod z for j. Now this beam can take tension, compression as well as bending. If you had chosen a link element, a link element is a truss so it doesn't take bending. So that's the difference between a beam and a truss element. Okay, the input for this element is uh, essentially these real constants you need to specify so as to completely define the element. The real constants are nothing but the sectional properties of the beam. So you need to define the area of the beam, the moment of inertia as well as the height of the beam. These are three most important sectional parameters of the beam. In addition to this material properties like Young's modulus and density are important. And if it is important if you want to do a, uh, an analysis in which self weight becomes important and you are applying an inertia load. Okay. So now let's see how to do this analysis in ANSYS. So we enter into the GUI of ANSYS software. First what we do is we click preferences and filter out everything except structural. Okay. Now we need to make the finite element model. So this finite element model is made inside the preprocessor menu of the ANSYS main menu which is located right at the left hand corner in the software preprocessor. Okay, first we will define the element type and its properties. So we will go to element type, add edit delete, add beam 3. Okay. So close. Now for this beam, we are defining the sectional properties which is done by using real constant. So real constant add edit delete add for beam 3. Okay. Area in our case is 50.65 inch or 4 inch in square. Moment of inertia is 7892 inch power 4. Height is 30 inches. Okay, we have to ensure that we are consistent throughout in, in answers about units. So we will we'll be using pound for mass, inch for length, and second for time in this analysis. Okay, so we will define the element type as beam and chosen the sectional properties in the real constant. Next, we will define the material properties. The beam is that of a made of a steel, so steel has. 13 to 10 power 6 psi as its Young's modulus of elasticity and 0.3 as Poisson's ratio. We go to material properties, material models, 
structural, linear, elastic, isotropic. Okay, we are going to do a linear analysis. The beam is assumed to be operating in the elastic region. We are not going to do a plastic analysis. And steel is an isotropic material. That is, it has same properties in all the direction. Now, Young's model of elasticity is 30 is 6. Poison's ratio is 0 0.3. Okay. Okay. So, our element type is ready. Our section is ready. Material is also ready. Now, we need to make the mod finite element model. So, we enter the modeling sub menu inside the preprocessor menu. Modeling. We will the create those five nodes. Create. You go to nodes in active coordinate system. Our active coordinate system is C6 equals 0 which is global Cartesian coordinate system. So first node is created at x equals 0. Second node is created at x is equal to 10 feet. So we are doing an, our analysis in inches. So 10 into 12 or you could have written 120. Apply. Node 2 gets created. Then uh, at the mid location of the beam which is at 20 feet or 240 inches apply so node 3 gets created then 360 and 480 okay now our nodes are ready now we can join them to get elements so we go to modeling create elements we define the attributes in our case there is only one element type which is beam 3 only one element which is steel the real constant is also only single which is uh, defining the section properties of the beam through area moment of inertia as well as height of the beam so okay now we create element through nodes auto numbered so it will automatically number it from uh, starting from one so the dialog box says to pick or enter nodes defining the element. We are picking nodes 1 and 2 and then pressing apply. So element number 1 gets created. Auto numbered. 2 and 3. So automatically element number 2 will get created. Okay. okay. So now our finite element model is ready. Now we will go to load. And we will fix these two locations node 2 and node 4 in the y direction so that a simple support gets simulated so node define loads apply structural displacement on node 2 comma 4 enter okay ui okay okay also we need to fix one more node in the x direction so that the beam is not translating along the x-axis otherwise the problem will not get solved so we are fixing node 2 in x direction also which means this node 2 becomes a pin support and node 4 becomes a roller support now we need to apply 10,000 pound per feet pressure load on this beam and this beam so we go to pressure on beams this and this okay and we apply a pressure load 10,000 pounds divided by 12 so 10,000 by 12 pounds per inch okay, okay if you had noticed This load key is specified as 1. Now, now for beam 3 element, if you see the input data summary from the help file, you would see that surface load pressure for load key 1 is in the negative y direction. So if, if we are specifying it as load key 2, then the pressure will get applied in the positive x tangential direction and similarly for load key 3 and 4 
now our finite element model is ready so we close the preprocessor we enter the solution and we solve this model in the current load step okay so now our solution is also done we enter into the general post processing we need to see whether we are getting proper reactions at these two locations which will validate whether our analysis is correct or not in terms of units and dimensions so we had applied 10000 per 10000 pound per feet of udl here and here so and this region is 10 feet so it becomes 1 lakh pounds by symmetry 1 lakh pound will get transferred here and 1 lakh pound will get transferred here as a reaction so let's see the reaction solution okay so in the fy direction 1 lakh pound at node 2 and 1 lakh pound at node 4 so our analysis is correct now we can see the deflection at node 3 so this result nodal solution degree of freedom solution y component displacement okay so for node 3 the deflection is 0.18246 so this is what you get when you calculate it theoretically and uh, this problem is already there as a solved example in timoshenko so this gets validated now uh, let's see also see the deformation plot so we got go to plot results deform shape deform shape only okay so it looks something like this so which is uh, which Looks all right. Cause we had applied uh, UDL in the two overhanging portions of the beam, which would have resulted in these portions going down and the mid portion rising up. So this is all right. Now we need to find stress, bending stress of the beam at the mid location. Now for finding this, we what we have to do is we have to use element tables. So before using that, let's see help documentation once again about this beam three element. If you see the beam three stress output definition, that's table three point one. Then all these outputs are available in the element table or S D Y T. That is bending stress in the top portion of the beam or bending stress on the element in the positive y direction. This is what we are interested in. So let's search for the sequence number which corresponds to s b y t in the element table listing so this gets defined here in the bottom okay this s b y t the sequence number is l s comma 2 at the i node and l s comma 5 at the j node so if we use l s comma 2 in the element table we will get bending stress at the top portion of the beam so let's see how to do it we go to element table define table add we go to by sequence number ls 3 and we specify a name right okay and we'll press n so so we'll select by number fitting okay we select beam 3 okay so this beam has i node at the center location of this beam okay so we list element table bending stress at the okay. so for element number 3 at the uh, uh, i node this bending stress is there which we were interested in So that's how the problem gets done.